We all love a good mystery, and Reddit has become the source for many beloved or sought after ones. But it's important to give spotlight to the mysteries that no one really talks about. This is the fourth entry of the Tip of My Tongue series where we dive into the more obscure pieces of people's media memories that have yet to be found. Some disturbing, others simply intriguing, but all of them bring about that urge to get to the bottom of the unsolved case. Let's get right into it. Do you ever feel like you're too small or too young to really witness and win somebody to the Lord? Really, Jesus loves us in a very special way. He keeps us safe. We'll always stay with our shepherd. Everybody can be happy. Isn't Jesus wonderful? He can heal anything, even warts. You know, we have all sorts of surprises here in Treasure Attic. Creepy Religious Kids Show Made by a Cult I Escaped From I know the title sounds clickbaity, but I assure you every word of it is true and what I'm describing is real. I just know it is. Some background. The cult in question is called the Family International, or TFI. I grew up in Huntington Beach, which funnily enough is where the culture started. I was born into it with my parents still remaining members to this day, their start dates for the cult as of now being unknown. What I know for a fact. The show followed a sheep, possibly named something biblical, as they encountered problems. The show was in the style of Sesame Street, with puppets and actors with small animated segments. Standard kids show affairs, right? Well, the problems encountered dove into disturbing subject matter. One segment I recall had the sheep talking to a little boy, who had said he wanted to serve Jesus in all the ways he could, with the sheep saying the little boy should give his body to the church, with an animated Jesus standing next to what I recall being children wearing little clothing. The show, from what I remember, appeared to have been made in the 80s, judging by the camera quality, but I grew up in the 90s and saw these at only four years old, so that puts us at 1994 for my earliest recollection of it. Some of the kids within our group were born in the 80s and they had seen these too, so that puts a possible start date as late as 1985 to 1989, but I could be wrong. The show came on VHS and we had hundreds stored away on church property. If this proves the existence of hundreds of episodes or just means there are multiple copies of the same episode is unknown. My theories. Information is likely scarce for two reasons. Either it's been scrubbed to save reputation or it was produced by the cult with no release outside it, so obviously no documentation. I also believe that the actress who voiced Sheep was a gospel singer who sang in numerous videos for the cult dating back to the 70s, which also leads me to believe it may have had musical segments. Children within the cult may have also been used for the production as well. I intend to update as new information is found, and I thank anyone who takes the time to read and help the search. As OP briefly went over, the Family International is a still active religious cult that was founded in 1968. They've undergone several name changes over the years, presumably in an attempt to cover their horrific past. One name being the Children of God, which is the cult that River and Joaquin Phoenix were a part of as children due to their parents' involvement. It's a very disturbing rabbit hole, and truth be told, the show may be better off lost. However, I'm sure the reason no one has been able to find it is a mix of obscurity and the cult trying to hide their disgusting history. I think it brings awareness of said history because such things shouldn't be hidden. Let's get into the comments and suggestions. Treasure Attic, probably the most infamous TFI show, was brought up repeatedly. Especially this episode, Let's Have Fun, where a sheep is featured and has a similar unsettling undertone, like OP's description. But while close, this was not the the show they were looking for. Another that was suggested a few times was Kitty Vitty, but this wasn't it either. I noticed several of these literal cult indoctrination videos are marked as for kids on YouTube, which is really concerning and goes to show YouTube is worried about the wrong things. I was demonetized for talking about a cartoon clown going down the sewer slide in the second volume of this series, but child exploitative cult shows definitely belong on YouTube Kids. This user asked if it was the Levettes and linked a terrifying theme song with some uncanny looking ass puppets. 
but OP said the style of puppets didn't match up and just overall looked very different. Someone brought up the Colts' bizarre music video for a song called SOS that I guess became a meme, and while obviously it wasn't the kids' show, someone brought up how this was produced by Aurora Productions, which could be a lead. User The Real Eggplant commented, Was it this? The guy in this video was busted years later in online chats talking about kidnapping, killing, and eating children. Referring to this clip of the show Joy Junction, where the puppeteer talks about dirty pictures, and who would have thought, eventually this dude ended up being sentenced to 20 years in prison. Honeydew Flavored linked this titled Frightening Christian Puppet Show, where sheep sing about their shepherd Jesus, but it doesn't match up too much and only gives pink morning cartoon vibes, I don't think it's actually anything sinister. But with all of these ideas and suggestions, and none of them putting the mystery to rest, user Slevlife raised a very valid point, saying there were only so many series that TFI made, none matching up with OP's recollection, adding that their guess was it was a children's show from another Christian group that was in the spirit enough to let them watch it. However, this user commented, TFI scrubbed all the child abuse shit pretty thoroughly after the Ricky incident, if I recall correctly, but good luck finding it. There's seems to be a lot of confusion on where and under what circumstances the man behind the puppet show propaganda died. The Ricky incident that they are referring to is a member who was essentially born and raised into this cult, being abused his whole life. Eventually escaped the cult in 2001, but he still understandably struggled moving on with his life. Four years later, on January 7th, 2005, he recorded a video saying he needed to take retribution for the abuse in the family. The next day, he killed a member of the cult following himself. It's such a tragic situation and highlights just how messed up the cult is. I really can't believe it's still a thing. And Feline Nova said a girl they used to be friends with had grown up in the cult and that when her family left, her parents stole some of the quote, brainwashing videos. She then went on to upload them to YouTube, proving there's probably a lot more media from TFI out there than we realize. This user, if their memory is recalling correctly, is the only person in the thread who remembers the video. I know exactly what you're talking about, but I have no idea what it's called. At least I think it's the same thing. I was at a hotel with my wife once and this was on one of the TV channels. We were in Traverse City, Michigan though, which isn't anywhere remotely close to Huntington Beach. We saw it around 2008, if that helps. All I remember was a song that went, I'm sorry God and my sins make me sad. Please forgive me and make me glad. I'm sorry God with the cross you show me that my sins made you die for me. This also had subtitles for the song and die was in all capitals. It was super creepy, and we refer to it as the Penitent Puppet Pals, but that's just the name we made up. We've never been able to find what it really was. Memory is pretty fickle though, so I'd take this with a grain of salt. Honestly, the only reason why I could justify this resurfacing is to give OP some sort of peace of mind and to raise awareness of the immorality and sickness of the cult, but regardless, I wish OP the best. Nineteen eighty slash nineties. Need help identifying a short snippet of some rock song. User tethered ninety seven turned to the tip of my tongue subreddit on May twenty fifth, twenty twenty two, in hopes they'd be able to figure out the artist of the song. They said, "Here's the only snippet of the song that I have, and a link to a vocaroo clip that you can take a listen to now." Long Oh, 
Immediately, my first thought was that it sounded like Morrissey from the Smiths, and a lot of other people shared that sentiment, but this obviously isn't actually a Smith song. OP had obtained the audio from a now-deleted YouTube video that they said had nothing to do with the song and was an unrelated still photo while the music played in the background. They did have the link, but it wasn't archived on way back. OP said the channel that posted the video is an asshat who was harassing the community they were a part of and is confident that the channel would not help in finding an answer anyway. Suggestions and opinions on the genre, era, and style of singing varied drastically within the thread. Peppermint S commented, Musically it reminds me of 5440, but the voice isn't quite right. How certain are you about it being an 80s or 90s song? To which OP replied, I'm not exactly certain about that, it's just that from where I got it from, that makes me think as such. I could be wrong, but I guess that can only be answered when someone finds this darn thing. Replies on the opinion of the era and genre included all of the following. I'd go back to the 60s or 70s. I'd say mid to late 70s, given the synth harmony. That was right around the time they were coming into vogue. Disagree. The production is very British, around the mid 80s. I think it sounds like a Brit pop slash rock group from the 90s. That definitely isn't any 90s song I've ever heard. There is too much synth in the background, which would put it closer to early to mid 80s. But the instruments and singer seem closer to a 60s or 70s band. It sounds like a 90s Canadian alt-rock band. Accordions, along with the style, were common at one point in the 90s. That's such a mid-80s sound. Definitely some Smiths influence with a bit of postcard records. The accent sounds northern, but not clearly Manchester or Liverpool. I would be surprised if it was earlier than 83. It's so catchy. Users mentioned the song sounded like it could be James Taylor, John Denver, The Church, R.E.M., Kitchens of Distinction, Miracle Legion, along with handfuls of other artists. But like this user said, it's most likely not any popular band since the lyrics can't be found online. The lyrics not being online doesn't mean it's an insanely obscure band, it just probably isn't any of the ones previously mentioned. I lean towards mid to late 80s to early 90s purely for the fact that I've ran into comparable music while on my blue chin hunts. PM Me A Good Song thought it sounded like the neo-psych revival of the 80s, giving Rain Parade and the 3 O'Clock vibes, but that there were hundreds of indie bands releasing singles and EPs at that time, so it could be hard to pinpoint the actual artist. They wished OP good luck on their search and said, Worst case scenario, you don't find this song, but you find a ton new favorite bands if you like that particular style of music. There's yet to be a considerable lead, but I still think if gained enough traction, this song can be identified. Obscure Claymation Hello, I'm trying to find this very old claymation. It featured an orange woman and it was insanely creepy. In one of the episodes, she murders a worm from an apple with a syringe needle. She had a very deep, simlish voice, and everything she did in other episodes was just downright creepy and odd. I think the time period might be 70s to 80s. Please help. This post was made nearly three years ago in October of 2020. OP also went on to make an edit sharing a picture of their beautiful rendition of the creature, noting these were literal spheres and not anything else you might think upon first glance. I'm gonna keep it real, I put this one in the video because I just want to see it be found. Distant Salem commented, First guess, The Trapdoor, an 80s British claymation that had lots of worms. But Opie said while it seems to be the same era, it wasn't this claymation. And that they also remembered a scene where the orange woman is scraping newspaper letters from the window with a razor blade because she would clean windows with newspaper. Very peculiar detail. Adventures of Mark Twain was a suggestion as it is definitely a creepy claymation movie, but this wasn't it either. This user asked, could it be Cecile the Ball from Sesame Street? It scared the living crap out of me at age three. Cecile was an orange ball of clay with a mouth and no eyes. Cecile would do weird things on screen. There was a Cecile song where she would say sinister things like, there's no escape, you just can't hide from me. Even though it wasn't what OP was hunting for, they did say if their memory was correct, that this strange orange ball was the same hue as the worm woman. It also wasn't Rex the Runt from Ardman or anything by Jan Vankmare. 
The only substantial detail we have besides the contents of the show is that OP remembers seeing it on Croatian national television, specifically the HRT channel, and thinks it could have been from Germany. While we don't have a whole lot of information to go off of, I hope this ends up being found and is as bizarrely wonderful as I picture it to be. A weird slash creepy ad I saw on Hulu and Twitch that didn't seem to actually advertise anything. On April 18th, 2023, user Operation Green Beans inquired about an unsettling advertisement that they saw on both Twitch and Hulu. Between the start of the pandemic lockdown in March 2021, given that they had gotten the ad-free version of Hulu after that, the details of the post are as follows. It was a 45 second ad, started out with TV static, then flipped to what appeared to be a male standing in an open grass field facing away from the camera with no sound. It went back to static into a weird rundown hospital. I'm assuming because there were old wheelchairs and mobile hospital beds. Again, no sound. Then it went back to the static a bit before, showing a woman in old time clothes, think like they wear on old Western shows. The woman was not facing the camera and was slowly backing up toward it. She started to turn around when it went back to static and the words don't be scared appeared on a black background to white text. Then there was a noise I can best describe as a pen click and it went back to TV static. The only sounds in the ad were the TV static sounds and the thing I could only call a pen click. I saw the ad quite a few times on Hulu but only like twice on Twitch. Google hasn't helped me at all. If there is a better place for this beyond here where I could get an answer let me know but this was the only place I could think of. User Drowning in Flames said how the clicking noise and static screen reminded them of The Ring, so had the idea it could have been an ad for one of the sequels. But OP insisted this wasn't the case, saying it wasn't some creepy bitch who crawls out of a TV in Wells. Then later added their brain was scarred by The Ring when they saw it during its release, implying they would have recognized it as an advert for the film franchise. Aniana asked if the font matched the ads for the game Don't Be Afraid, since they splashed the title on screen, but unfortunately OP he said it didn't and described the text as blocky. User Don't Kill Hobos suggested ads for American Horror Stories, but OP replied with I've basically ruled out AHS. And their latest edits say it doesn't seem to be anything to do with American Horror Story and I have ruled out it being any Huluween ads. None of them fit. It seemed like there was no promising suggestion or lead, but then this user came across an old thread titled Okay Twitch, you can stop with the creepy ads that aren't advertising anything. This was in 2018, but some details match up with OP's post and we all know how memory can be, uh, funky. Or maybe they were simply still advertising them again in 2020. These are the ads they recalled seeing. 1. A girl standing in the middle of an open field, walking slowly toward the camera as the camera person backs up. 2. A birthday cake collapsing on itself. 3. A car following a truck on what seems to be a highway. A mattress falls out of the truck and the car swerves off the road and the camera stares at the mattress. 4. A person walking slowly into a lake. 5. A wheelchair in an empty room. This is the one with sound and it is of a baby crying. In typical Reddit fashion, this OP got accused of carbon monoxide poisoning, but their CO levels were A-OK -okay, and people later found another thread talking about what appeared to be the same phenomenon of puzzling ads, saying, for the past few weeks, I've been getting really weird ads at late night. Most of the time, I don't even think they're advertising anything and going on to describe some. They added an edit. Literally seconds after posting this, I got a weird ad. It's some guy singing and lighting a candle. No products, no text, just a guy singing and lighting the candle. It ends abruptly mid song. And this time they provided a screenshot. So users in the tip of my tongue thread were able to fetch the original video of this candle advert. But no one has yet been able to find the creepy field video that OP is looking for. It's only been about a month though, and whether it's a part of this string of unsettling Twitch ads or not, I can't imagine something from only a few years ago would stay lost. So I'm hopeful that this post will be marked as solved at some point in the future. Disturbing slash upsetting YouTube channel from I'm guessing around 2010 to 2013. 
Quick disclaimer, there's a brief mention of child SA and a couple of things that some people probably don't want to hear about. I don't think it's that disclaimer worthy until the last animation they describe, but I'll put timestamps and I have to censor some stuff anyway, so let's just get into the post. I remember this YouTube channel that posted strange crude animations of disturbing things. I only remember a few as these really upset me and I was around the ages of 10 to 12 at the time. First one is an animation. I remember it being black and white, but there could have been minimal color. Of a young girl with a very deformed and ugly baby wrapped in a blanket. She was on a public street using a payphone and talking to some kind of 911 operator or crisis type hotline. The conversation was something like, hello, I ran away from home with my baby. I need help. To which 911 responded, okay, we can help you, where are you? But the girl replied with, there's something wrong with my baby. It doesn't look right. The thing is, it's also my dad's baby. 911 said something like, okay, I understand. We can get you help. The second video was another crude animation of a young girl who had woken up and gotten her first period. I don't remember many details from this one, but it was something like she didn't know what was happening and thought something was really wrong with her, so she got scared and ran into traffic, then got hit by a car and died. One I sort of remember was either a young child, don't remember if it was a boy or a girl, taking a weapon to school and weaponizing kids and teachers. Later it shows them coming home and being beaten by a man, maybe father or stepfather, then a silhouette of them being by the man on the ground. That's all I remember. It was really weird, disturbing, and upsetting, and I don't think I watched many other videos on the channel. Or if I did, I blocked them out. I want to say the name of the channel started with a K and had a P in the name somewhere. The animation style was not very colorful, pretty crude and simple as I remember. Kind of similar to the style of cyanide and happiness, but not exactly that. If anyone knows what I'm talking about, I'd appreciate your input. Thank you. As someone who grew up on the weird, sometimes deserving side of YouTube, these videos ring a bell. I don't know if I'm recalling the videos because tons of similar edgy gross content were being produced at the time or if I had come across this specific channel, but other users also felt they had seen some of them. User Random Cacti commented, I definitely remember watching these videos. I'm guessing they aren't up on YouTube anymore. Due to the nature of topics mentioned, being removed or the creator deleting them is definitely likely, but I think there's a chance it still somehow is on YouTube or someone out there there has it archived. We know it isn't from Danger Dolan or this animation titled Amy. This user asked if it was a Streets for Beast video, but it didn't match up. Someone had the audacity to say Salad Fingers, but as Happy Investment pointed out, Salad Fingers is wholesome. Eating a Cookie had the idea for OP to go through their watch history if they use the same account as they did back then, saying you can sort by date to make it a lot more of a convenient task. But OP replied, this would be great. Unfortunately, I just browsed without an account back then. This user said they think the best way to figure out the mystery of this disturbing channel could be browsing 2010 to 2013 YouTube on the Wayback Machine. I'm inclined to agree. I'd be really surprised if none of the videos are archived anywhere. And this is one that I think is just a matter of time time before it shows up. Psychological horror slash thriller where the big reveal is that they're in a large structure in the desert. My fiance and I were talking about foreshadowing and how I hate movies that make a big plot point with no foreshadowing. One of my gripes was, like in Cube, how at the end the guy goes to exit, but it turns out the cube is in the desert, but there was no foreshadowing and it was just random. He looked at me weird and said, that's not how Cube ends. I was adamant it was. I have seen Cube. I love the Saw series, so friends made me watch Cube in about the early 2010s. So he sat me down and made me watch the end of Cube again. I have no recollection of the end he showed me or the character that survives at the end of the film, even though he is the MC or anything about it. But I know I've seen it because I know stuff like how the set was just two rooms with different lighting. Also, you know it's in a cave, not the desert. So now I have this scene in my head, maybe in the Saw-esque genre, maybe not of a movie about people escaping rooms slash puzzles in a giant structure, but at the end, a character escapes, but they're in a vast desert. I think it was a large mirrored cube-esque structure and the film had no foreshadowing. It was in a desert, so their escape was actually just not worth it because now they die in a desert. I genuinely feel like I'm going bonkers. Did I just make up a film and assign the storyline to Cube? I'm not an artist in any way, but here's some visuals that are like kinda in the ballpark of what I remember. 
In their points, they added, I know memory is fallible, and I don't have carbon monoxide poisoning. With this entry, we're going to be sort of dipping into the Mandela effect and how fallible memory really is. Now, I was obsessed with the Mandela effect back in 2016 and thought I was in some kind of parallel reality. Now, I think memory is unreliable and people would rather blame it on CERN or whatever than admit we can't trust our own brains. But that doesn't mean the movie that OP is recalling doesn't exist, it's just there's a chance they did make it up. Going into the comments though, you'll see multiple people also thought Cube ended like this. Catwoman1948 commented, I must be crazy because that is how I remember the ending of Cube too. Never saw the sequels, would never watch Saw or anything that extreme. It had to be Cube. A cave? No. I'm certain I remember Desert at the end. Now I'm going to have to watch it again. Yo, you two get back to your own timeline. This user said, dude, I literally came here to say cube, so if cube doesn't end that way, I gotta know the answer to this too. Okay, I'm going to throw gasoline on this Mandela effect fire and agree with you OP 100%. I was certain this was the cube. That was the first thing that popped into my mind and I remember the exact ending you described beat for beat. How is this not the cube? It must be something so similar that our minds are mixing the two movies, but I can't figure out what it was. There were some actual feasible suggestions like the maze runner, circle, the portal to ending, I have no mouth that I must scream, signal, a tons more, but none were it. OP even added a humongous list of everything it isn't. At this point, I was like, all right, probably a false memory. Let's be real, the ending to Cube isn't the most memorable. But then user sarcasm left a comment that caught my eye. Maybe you saw the alternate ending and link to a Lost Media Wiki article. And it contains info of the original ending for Cube, where Kazan is still the one who makes it out, but as he walks out, it's revealed that what's outside of the cube is a beach, which can look a lot like a desert in some iffy memory. The only thing is it also has to do with aliens, which OP said didn't seem familiar, but reiterated how unreliable memories are. The director decided he wanted the outside of the cube to remain a mystery, which is why we have the ending that we do today. But several people have claimed to have seen this ending during its theatrical release. There's just no known copy of it. Someone in this thread actually said they saw both versions. There is a hole in this theory though. OP was five years old during Cube's theater run, so they didn't see it in theaters. But OP did say this, there were two ways I could have possibly seen it at this point in my life. A person in my life at the time was a movie savant, genuinely. He had shelves of DVDs even though it was around 2010. Um, definitely a definite very legal way that is legal which both could have ended up having that ending. Dude was obsessed with hoarding rare stuff and media in case it went out of print or was lost forever. But because it's unconfirmed and I can't find it, I can't give it the stamp of approval. The only possibilities are it's an obscure movie that hasn't been named, OP's pirate friend had a copy of the lost ending, or this doesn't exist and it's just a collective false memory. It is funny how these widespread false memories tend to have little pieces of truth in them, like the alternate cube ending, or how Fruit of the Loom trademark filed a cornucopia in the 80s only to never use a cornucopia in their logo. Maybe the movie that OP watched will be found, or maybe it never existed. Unfortunately, this post is one that I fear might stay open forever, but you never know. The world of media is insanely vast, we've all grown up consuming different pieces. And memory really can be one of the strangest things. Brains can remember the most specific detail of something from decades ago, yet get major details wrong. Thankfully, we live in the age of the internet where people can help put these mysterious memories to rest. But that isn't always the case. I hope you enjoyed this video, I've linked below each post because maybe someone out there has the answers for these people, or maybe they will forever be unsolved. Either way, thank you.